Now that you have a basic understanding of hard plumbing fittings, it's time to plan the plumbing design for your saltwater tank. My approach to plumbing the saltwater tank is to keep the design as simple as possible. But the plumbing needs to be functional and it needs to get out of your way. I see lots of plumbing designs that are overly complicated when they don't need to be. Just because you use a lot of fittings on your plumbing design doesn't make it good and it doesn't mean that you know what you're doing. When it comes to cutting PVC pipe, you've got a couple options. Hacksaw works okay. Chop saw or miter saw works too, and manual PVC shears work as well. Here's the thing about manual PVC shears. They're great for small jobs. If you're cutting small diameter pipe or just have to make a couple cuts, I would go that route. If you have to do a lot of cuts or you're cutting large diameter pipe, your hands are gonna hurt and you might even get carpal tunnel syndrome. So when you wanna change your plumbing game, you get the Milwaukee PVC shears. These things are flat out game changer. I waited way too long to buy these. All you gotta do is open up the shear and cut away. Here's the Milwaukee PVC shears in action. Boom, done. Yes, folks, it's that easy. A $200 tool for plumbing one, maybe two saltwater tanks may be out of the question for you. And if that's the case, the chopper miter saw is second best. Work smarter, not harder. Let the tool do the cutting for you as opposed to wrecking your hands with the manual PVC shears. Once your cuts are made, remember this pro tip. Clean up your cuts. It's not uncommon for PVC pipe to have a rough edge after it's been cut. That can make it hard to fit on the fitting, which is gonna to lead to leaks. The answer is to clean up the edge by filing it off, or if you wanna step up your game again, you grab a pipe reamer. These simply fit on the edge of the pipe, and you give it a little twirl like this. Now we have a nice clean edge that's chamfered, which is gonna slide right onto the fitting help that fitting bottom out and make a smooth, solid connection. All right, cuts are made, ends cleaned up. Now it's time to prime the ends, right? <laughs> Purple primer is for building code inspections, not your saltwater tank. Clear PVC cleaner is a choice of saltwater tank professionals and I've been using it for years. It gets the dirt and grime off the pipe to prepare it for gluing. Use cleaner, not primer. Once you've cleaned the pipe, then glue it. Here's another pro tip for you that I discovered after plumbing saltwater tanks over the years. Use medium or heavy duty PVC glue. It has a longer dry time, not by a couple seconds, but still longer than the regular PVC glue. That gives you a little more working time to make your connections. And it doesn't drip like regular PVC glue does. That makes for cleaner plumbing. Now what? You're supposed to wait 24 hours for everything to cure, right? Not needed. A couple hours is fine. Then pressure test your plumbing. Easiest way to do this is to put water in your sump and start your return pump. That tests the pressure side of your plumbing. Note that your tank will need to be full for you to test the drain side. Here's how I plumb the Mega Matrix 120. Water exits the Cichet Synchro 9.0 and then makes a 90 degree turn to head to the back of the sump. Next is a T-fitting to feed the SpectraPure MR dual media reactor. Water then continues through a side exit elbow where some water goes up into the tank through one of the return lines. Note that there is a true union ball valve here to let me restrict flow as the water will prefer to come up this return line. That's because there's less effort involved for water to travel through this return line. With a true union ball valve, I can restrict the flow and I have a union in case I want to remove the plumbing to pull the sump for deep cleaning. Whatever water doesn't go through the first return line is diverted to the other return line. Note that I put a union here in the plumbing design as it makes for less plumbing to remove in case the sump needs to be pulled. On the drain side of the equation, I have unions on both ends so I can easily pull the sump. Now I could get by with putting unions down here on the sump end, but by putting unions on both ends, I can remove this whole section of pipe to get the plumbing out of the way if I need to pull the sump. Clean, simple plumbing. It doesn't have to be complicated. 